Hello viewers, this is Kenneth and a response to several offline requests by some of my viewers. I am doing this very short video to provide a further clarification on the difference between change in quantity demand and change in demand. I will be utilizing the age of two separate graphs placed side by side to each other as you can see on the board. In respect of a single individual consumer of bottled ever water, whom I refer to as Mr. John. And I will be assuming further that Mr. John is a salaried worker who earns a monthly salary of 100,000 naira. And an extract from his budget shows that Mr. John normally consumes about 10 cartons of bottled ever water monthly at a cost of 1,000 naira per carton, which is represented on the graph. Where we have that at the price of 1,000 naira, Mr. John consumes 10 cartons of uh, bottled ever water. From both graph, from this side we go to, you see that at the price of 1,000 naira per carton, Mr. John consumes 10 carton of uh, bottled ever water. And what this implies is that Mr. John spends 1,000 naira times 10 to purchase bottled ever water, which means that Mr. John spends a total of 10,000 naira to purchase bottled ever water on a monthly basis. The question we are interested in providing answers to is what could make Mr. John increase the quantity consumed of bottled ever water on a monthly basis? For instance, what could make Mr. John to increase his consumption of bottled ever water from 10 cartons to say 15 cartons? Applicable here, from 10 cartons to say 15 cartons. Or what could make Mr. John a consumer of bottled ever water to reduce the quantity consumed from 10 cartons to say 5 cartons. Okay, one basic factor that could prepare Mr. John to increase his consumption of ever water from 10 cartons to 15 cartons is already implicit in the law of demand, and that factor is the price. For instance, if the price of one carton of bottled ever water decreased from say decrease from 1,000 to say 700 naira, Mr. John can now afford to purchase greater quantity. So, a decrease in the price from 1,000 naira to say 700 naira per carton can push Mr. John to increase the consumption from 10 cartons to 15 cartons of uh, bottled water. So let's call the initial point point B and the new point now point C. So that the movement from 10 cartons to 15 cartons represents the movement from point B to point C, which is what we refer to as extension in quantity demand the last time. On the contrary, if the price of a carton of bottled ever water increased from 1,000 to say 1,300, the price is relatively more expensive, and as a result of that, Mr. John will decrease the quantity of uh, ever water that is going to consume, for instance. An increase in price from 1,000 to 1,300 naira could reduce the quantity consumed from 10 cartons to 5 cartons of bottled ever water. And let's call this point A so that the reduction in quantity from 10 to 5 cartons of bottled ever water represents a backward movement from point B to point A, which is what we called contraction in quantity demand the last time. Therefore, this series of backward and forward movement from B to A or from B to C along the same demand curve in what is being regarded to in economics as change in quantity demand or movement along the demand curve. And it is only being brought about by increase or decrease in the price of the commodity in question. Let's now move to other factors that could propel Mr. John to increase or decrease the quantity of bottled ever water that is going to consume, aside the price. So we are now assuming that the price of a carton of bottled ever water is constant at 1,000 naira. But now, what if Mr. John's income increased from 100,000 naira per month to 150,000 naira per month? Or if Mr. John expects that the price of a carton of ever water is going to increase, maybe in the next two weeks, from 1,000 naira to 1,200? Or if all of a sudden Mr. John develops greater tastes and preferences for the consumption of ever water, Probably there were other brands of water that Mr. John was combining with ever water. None of a sudden he no longer wishes to consume those brands, but now they blow greater tests for ever water. Hence, we now have a situation whereby at the original price of a carton of ever water, which is 1,000 naira, Mr. John can now afford to consume 
greater quantity of ever water, which is 15 cartons of ever water. And this has resulted in a right world shift in the demand curve from what we had earlier to another demand curve, which we can tag as D2, a right world shift in the demand curve. What if, on the contrary, Mr. Jones' income or salary reduced from $100,000 per month to, say, $70,000 per month? Or if Mr. John start expecting that in the next two weeks the price of a cattle of ever water is going to fall to, say, 700 naira? Or if all of a sudden Mr. John developed negative tests for consuming uh, bottled ever water instead and instead increase his test or desire to consume other brands of water. What is going to happen is that even though the price of a cattle of ever water has not decreased or increased, Mr. John can no longer afford to purchase up to 10 cartons of ever water, but now can afford to purchase lower quantities. So at the original price of 1,000 naira, Mr. John can no longer purchase 10 cartons of a bottled ever water, but rather will now be consuming 5 cartons. So we now have a situation where the original price of a carton of ever water, Mr. John is now consuming 5 cartons. And this has brought about a leftward shift in the demand curve of Mr. John from D to say D0. A leftward shift in the demand curve. Let us equally represent the various points on this graph, the way we represented that of change in quantity demand. So the initial position of Mr. John when his salary was 100,000 and uh, the price of a carton of whatsoever water is 1,000 naira was here, which is represented as point B. But as a result of an increase in his monthly income, Mr. John increased his consumption from 10 cartons to 15 cartons, which can be represented as point C. While as a result of a decrease in his monthly income from 100,000 naira to 70,000 naira, Mr. John reduced his consumption of bottled ever water from 10 cartons to 5 cartons, resulting to a leftward shift from point B to a point A. Now, this series of movements from point B to point C or from point B to point A, which resulted in shift in the original demand curve is what is known as change in demand, otherwise known as shift in the demand curve. In summary, both change in quantity demand and change in demand are accompanied by increases or decreases in the quantity demanded of the commodity involved. However, change in quantity demand can only be brought about by a change in the price of the commodity involved. While change in demand can be brought about by changes in other factors affecting demand other than the price of the commodity. Furthermore, why change in demand is accompanied by a shift either to the left or to the right of the demand curve. Change in quantity demand does not bring about a leftward or rightward shift in the demand curve, but is rather concerned with the movement along the original demand curve, either upward movement or downward movement in the same demand curve.